Hey guys, I'm so excited to bring you today's video where I'm going to show you how I made these patio chairs, a patio couch, and side table. I'm going to be attaching plans to the description below and also on my website, eternalharvestdecor.com. So make sure and check those out. These will save you a ton of money and they look classy in front of a house. Stick around, I'll show you how. <laughs> The first thing I did was run to Lowe's and grab all of my lumber, a bunch of one by threes and a bunch of two by threes. I brought them home and I ran them all through the planer. Now this is not a necessary step. You don't have to do this. I just like to do this with all of my framing lumber. Helps give it a nice straight edge. You could also run it through the table saw. Then I cut my legs down to the height with all my two by threes and I made piles. Since I was making three things, I was making two chairs and a couch, I like to cut everything up front and make piles for each product. For this project, I used my Craig Jig, which is here. This is a pocket hole system, and I have a video about how to use a Craig Jig pocket hole system. It's not very expensive and it's a great joining method. And as you can see here, I need to adjust my drill bit to be one and a half inches and then make sure the pocket hole side is set to one and a half inches deep. Since these are two by threes, they're one and a half inches thick. And then I use these to get all of my pocket holes done on both chairs and the couch all at one time. It's a lot of pocket holes, but it makes the project go a lot faster. Here's a quick view of the plan that I made and the pocket holes will go in all the cross pieces. So the top and all around the seat. And that's on each piece. And then you'll also use pocket holes when you attach the one by three slats for the design aspect. And if you wanted, you could do those at this point. I didn't figure out how to do all of this till the end. So, you know, hindsight, 2020, etc. So I like to keep everything in piles throughout the entire project. So I'm moving my Craig jig from pile to pile to do all my pocket holes. And I also use a pencil to mark each piece to which arm, back, side, etc. Now this is the couch, so the cross pieces are a lot longer, but the arms are made exactly the same as the chairs, which makes this design a lot more simple. Here I've got the front arm and the back part and the seat, and I'm gonna measure up 12 inches from the base on the back and mark that, and 12 inches from the base on the front. And then I'll attach the seat cross piece to line up with those markings. Now I've got my Type Bond 3, which is waterproof. It's a great glue, my favorite glue. I'm gonna switch out my bit for the Craig screw. It's a square head bit. And I've got my two inch Craig screws. I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue on the end of the seat piece and drill that into the back first. Then I'll do the exact same thing with the glue for the front piece. And you're gonna to wanna to spread that glue out. You get a nice, better, stronger joint if the glue is spread. And drill that into that front leg. Now that I've made a few of these, I would suggest completing the entire arm first for both sides of the seat before doing this cross piece. This is the back seat piece. And now I'm gonna to have to assemble another arm in order to finish up the leg. But in terms of being more efficient and making the project go a little faster, if you assemble all the arms of all the seats and the couch or whatever it is that you're making, it'll make it go a lot faster. Once you have two arms, you can line that up with the cross piece in the back and it should line up perfectly with each seat piece on the arms so that it's nice and level and square. If you have a speed square, that works really well in this process. You can put that there in the corner, make sure you have a 90 degree angle. As my speed square sits there on the side, this is one of those uh, do as I say, not as I do moments. <laughs> and then I wanted to attach the back piece but I didn't want the screws to be showing or the pocket holes to be showing on the front. So I decided to flip the chair over and finish doing the seat completely and then I'd stand it up to attach that back piece. Again, I was learning as I did this first chair, so. 
so now that it's standing up, I can attach this cross piece with the pocket holes in the back and some glue. Now these chairs are really large. My customer was able to find some really great cushions on Wayfair.com that were 28 inches by 28 inches by six inches thick. They're really nice cushions. And this made for really comfy, spacious lounge chairs. So it was perfect in the end. Now I'm making another arm. I'm gonna go ahead and make all the arms for the couch and the other chair. And then I'll attach the cross seat pieces the same way as I did the first. As I was building, I realized that the seat needed a little more reinforcing. So I added a couple two by threes to the inside of the chairs and the couch. And later I'll actually add more. And I wouldn't necessarily do this step next, I would finish the arms completely. So one of the mistakes that I've made here is that I did not add pocket holes to the back side of this front spot where I can run a rail or the armrest. Because in my mind, I was just gonna drill these pocket holes later. Well, there's not enough room here for my pocket hole jig plus the drill, there it is, the drill bit to fit in order to drill those pocket holes. So I'm going to have to go another route. I'm going to use these Power Pro screws that are meant for outdoor. Um, they've got a coating on them. And I Craig jigged this side here, pocket hold this side here. And then I cut this piece as a guide so I can make sure I'm level with the front. This is the exact same height as this front piece here. And what I'm gonna do is, actually, ah! Doing this one-handed is ridiculous. Okay, so I'll put this piece here, see if I can do this. And I'm gonna put the pocket holes down there and there. And I'm gonna line this up so I'll pocket hole there, and then I'm gonna use the Power Pro screws here. I wish I would have added those pocket holes when I was pocket holing everything at the very beginning, but I didn't. So it's a workaround and power pro screws are really great. They make deck screws, so it'll be fine for outdoors, but in hindsight, again, 2020. <laughs> And now it's time to cut the pretty pieces, the slats that will go in the arms and the backing. These are one by threes. And basically I just measured and cut accordingly to fit in those spaces. And I did enough to fit three one by threes in each space. This part is a lot of repetitive cuts and a lot of pocket holing, but in the end it really adds a lot to the design and is really pretty. I feel like pocket holes are the best way to attach these slats. Um, it's the safest way. I've seen a couple other plans that are similar to this that use nail guns. I would not recommend that. It's a very dangerous way to do things. Pocket holes are nice and secure. People don't always like the look of pocket holes, but there are pocket hole fillers you can get. 
little pegs or dowels that go inside the whole portion if that's something that bothers you. In this case, these are all painted black, so you don't notice the pocket holes very much at all. And I'm gluing and screwing with one and a half inch screws here into the arms for the back slats and the side slats. I did use a one by two piece there to help me keep all the slats evenly placed. It kind of acted as my guide or a spacer. It's always good to have scraps lying around. <laughs> they come in handy. Once all the slats were installed, I decided to add a two by six to the seat for structural purposes, but also for comfort in sitting. I felt like this would be a lot more comfortable. And then I sanded everything down. I sanded to 120 before painting. For the paint, I use this bare indoor, outdoor enamel, and I really like the smoothness of this. It was a water-based enamel, so I could wash my brushes and stuff, but it felt really strong. I hope it'll stand up. They told me that it should be good outside, but as far as outdoor paints, I'm not the expert. I've been trying a lot of different kinds, trying to find one that's good. So I went through and did two coats everywhere on the chair, anywhere that water might seep in. I wanted to make sure it had a nice good seal on it. And I just rolled it with a little brush, a little roller that I grabbed from um, Home Depot while I was there. It's a semi-gloss and I think that might help it hold up to dust and things like that when washing from being outside. But I kind of like the look of the satin better. So I don't know, personal preference, I guess. And there they are. They turned out beautifully. I'm so excited and happy with the end result. And my customer was nice enough to bring me a cushion to make sure it fit. And then I got to try it out a little bit. It was so comfortable. Um, thank you so much for watching you guys and hanging on with me. If you want the plans, make sure and check my website in the blog section. You'll find printable plans there and make sure and tag, like, and subscribe. See you guys next time.